Hi everybody, my name is Janessa. Just disregard my headset because I'm actually like working right now. I just thought I would drop in and give you guys um, a little information regarding my process with Mia Aesthetics in Austin. So initially I um, initially I was you know searching I was like okay I want a breast augmentation so I did some research and I'm literally in Austin so I saw me aesthetics was there and they pretty much have some of the cheapest prices or whatever um so yeah I was just doing um research and prices and I was looking at the doctors and I saw that about Dr. Sharapu so I was like oh, okay like he does really good I liked him so okay so my process um it was pretty simple my my coordinator diana montoya she was good she was prompt she was even like texting me like helping me get a surgery date she even helped me get the one i wanted because initially i had my surgery scheduled for march of 2021 and then i was like no i want it sooner than that so we had it scheduled um like literally when she called me back for me to put down my deposit and make the payment um she was like oh there's an opening for december so i was like oh wow okay bet so december it was um so they sent me different information about what vitamins to take what not to do i needed labs and you know things of that nature so i took i went to dollar tree like i didn't really get too like you know deep or expensive with the pills the vitamins I just got some iron pills because you know your hemoglobin which is like your blood count it has to be a certain um a certain um i don't know why my mind went blank but a certain um level so my level was 12.9 um i'm not sure like if people's levels run low or how the whole situation with the levels work but um yeah so I, I bought vitamins, I bought iron, um, I got a women's one a day, and I literally, I got these all from Dollar Tree, so it wasn't like I went and spent like 50 to to $100 on pills. I did buy these, which are blood builder pills, they're called Hemoplex. Um, for me, I can't really speak on anyone else, but for me, it seemed like, I don't know, they were just kind of weird, like, every time I took them, it literally, I started feeling like that urgency, like I was getting a UTI, so, I really didn't really take them as often, I just kind of doubled up on my, um, my iron and my folic acid pills, okay, so, bam, um, 60 days before your surgery, they require that you do your blood test, they want you to get like your your analysis. They want you to get your blood levels checked and like a pregnancy test. Um, I did get that done. I went to um, an urgent care and they were literally trying to charge me like four hundred and something dollars, and I was like, absolutely not. Um, so I found a lady on Facebook. Her name is Vstat. I'll put her link in the in my description as well. Her name is Vstat. She did my um, my medical release for $99 and she did it virtually so I didn't have to like travel to her she did it virtually she faxed my papers they got it on time I had nothing to worry about then it was time for the labs um the labs they were kind of expensive as well like literally with the well visit and the um like everything together it, it was really pricey now it may be different um if you have insurance perhaps your insurance will work with you or whatever i'm not sure but at the time my insurance oops sorry my computer just went like went kind of crazy okay so yeah um at the time my insurance was just kind of like um if they weren't going to do my medical release or my surgical release or whatever because it wasn't like it was for cosmetic surgery so it wasn't like med medically necessary so i had to go through her like i said her name is vstat on facebook and i will put her down in the comments so then when it came to my labs um i mean i guess you could go to like lab core or quest diagnostic and i've heard that they could be pricey i'm not sure because i also um got like um, I went to jasonlabs.com and I picked out each test that Mia sent me um, that needed to be done and it came out to like $119. So I did that, got the labs, they also faxed it to the doctor. So they faxed my labs, um, the lady faxed over my medical 
release or whatever, my surgical release, saying that, you know, I was in good health or whatever. Um, and yeah, I got my clearance about a week later. Um, so then 30 days before they check in with you, they're like, hey, you know, asking about how are you, how are you doing? How are you paying? Like what your plans are? We did that. So then two weeks before, because, you know, they want you, if you smoke, they want you to stop smoking. You stop drinking about two weeks before. You stop taking your pills about two weeks before. So, um, I, I did all of that. Like, that wasn't hard at all for me. Um, but they do want to make sure you stop because from what I understand, if you have nicotine in your system and secondhand smoke does count, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, but nicotine in your system, if you're getting like your breast done, it could cause your implants to reject. So they definitely don't want you to like, you know, smoke or anything. So, um, I did, I, you know, when I got cleared for surgery, that was it. So basically it was time to pay. So, um, for those, like, I don't know, I didn't use like care credit or anything. I paid cash and with my debit card, which gave me a $500 discount. So the procedure itself was $3,800. And then they applied the $500 discount because I paid with cash and debit and that made it $3,300. And then I just kind of made payments. Well, I made like two payments because my medical, um, my surgical coordinator, her name is Nicole Roman. She was the worst. Like she was rude. I would apply to her. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not apply. I'm sorry. But I would, um, I would like contact her to make a payment on monday and she wouldn't contact me till like friday and i'm just like okay i've already spent the money by then so she really wasn't like the best like when it came to like communication and then like if i would like contact her and i'm like hi like please respond she would be rude and even respond back in all caps so she wasn't like the the easiest person to work with or whatever just you know being honest about it um since i am giving my journey for me aesthetic um, everyone else was pretty prompt. Um, Diana Montoya, she was the, sur the, the patient coordinator and she was great. She was quick. Like I said, she sent me texts. Um, Nicole Roman, who was my surgical coordinator, not so much. She just being honest, um, she was rude. She didn't respond, you know, like in a timely manner. It'd take her like a week to get back at me. I called the number that they provided me with. I couldn't get any contact. So yeah, that was just like... It was like, you know, it kind of was discouraging, especially with people, you know, already having their reviews for what they were. So, um, my pre-op, my pre-op visit. So I went into my pre-op visit. Um, I think I had to be at pre-op around 12 o'clock maybe. So yeah, I went around 12 o'clock. Um, it wasn't nothing. It was like a million papers to sign. So I signed my papers. I went in, I spoke with the lady. She was very nice. I forgot her name though, but she was very nice. Um, she let me try on a bra. She let me try on the implants. Um, like, you know, try on the sizer so I could see what size was best for me, what size I wanted. So yeah, you know, she, she was really great. Um, so yeah, after that, I did that. Then I went to the surgical coordinator. Um, they gave and told me, you know, what all was going on. I made the rest of my payment in full. I paid in cash. So they had like a little money counter in there and they just, you know, counted it. And then boop, I was ready to be seen the next day. So, um, after that, the next here it comes the next morning. I was called that matter of fact, they didn't tell me the night of the day of pre-op. So I wasn't sure like when I was to stop eating. excuse me I wasn't sure when like to stop eating because you know you have to stop eating like a specified time before surgery so I just kind of like pigged out until I would say around 5 45 I got a call and they were like um be here tomorrow morning at five o'clock for surgery so I was like okay I went and got stuff I think I, I just got like a pillow some pillows because you know they say it's best to sleep like elevated whenever you have the breast augmentation so I got pillows I got, um, what else did I got? I, I got a robe because, like, you know, is at the first few days, it is going to be hard to be, like, trying to, like, hassle with pulling your arms up over a shirt and, like, all of that. So, I just got a robe. Um, yeah, they say a big nightgown and a robe. So, I went morning of surgery. I got up, um, 
like I said, I'm in Austin basically. So got there at five o'clock. Um, they opened the doors. I sat in the waiting room about 20 minutes maybe. And they called me to the back from what it looked like. The girls with the breast augmentations go first. And then after would be, um, the women who had like, you know, the more intensive stuff done, like the butt, butt lifts and things like that. So I went in, um, they changed me, gave me the little blood pressure socks, the hat for my hair. Um, then they gave me a drug test and a nicotine test, a drug test and a nicotine test. So the crazy thing about that is I don't smoke cigarettes. However, my husband does. So I actually tested positive for nicotine, um, which the doctor, he was just kind of like, you know, you got to stay away from that because that'll ruin your implants. And I was just like, okay, um, had me freaked out because I thought they were going to cancel the surgery, but they didn't. They only, I guess, cancel if you have drugs in your system. So um, they did that. Um, I spoke to the anesthesiologist. He came in. He was a pretty cool guy. Now, Dr. Sherpu, I will say... He's not mean, but he's pretty stern. Like, a lot of people say, oh, he's great, da-da-da. But he was just kind of, like, there, you know, to me. He wasn't, like, I didn't get, like, a connection or anything. And then it was my first time meeting him, so, you know, I was, like, excited. And he was just like, okay, so what do you want? Like, you know, he wasn't really just, no, but that's just my, um, my, um, you know, my experience with him. He was, like, you know, kind of dry, I guess, if you would say. So... Um, anyway, he left out, we went over my size, he did my measurements, you know, he told me what I could do, I let him know what I wanted, and he basically was like, okay, that's realistic, we can make that happen. So, I went in to the, the, the operating room, and I laid down on the, the little table, and literally, the anesthesiologist was like, well, Dr. Sherpa went and just kind of sat down and was just looking at me. And then the anesthesiologist was like, you're going to feel like burning in your hand because they placed the IV in my hand. He was like, you're going to feel burning in your hand for like a moment. And then that's all I remember. So I just remember burning. I woke up and I was freezing cold, like free, like shaking, like, ooh, like shaking cold, like ridiculously cold, like freezing cold and I had blankets all over me but it was like they literally almost I guess could say they had like a a portable heater with like a connect on it and they brought it to like I guess when they were dealing with each person they would bring it to their bed and put it under to warm them up real quick so like literally I'm just like freezing shaking I'm in pain um another thing they give you your prescriptions during post-op pre-op so you got to go get those filled you get your prescriptions filled and then you're supposed to bring them with you to the doctor's office so that when you're hurting after um, surgery, they'll give you one of your pills that you bought. Now, me, myself, I thought that was weird. I'm just like, why won't you just give me something instead of, you know, whatever. So she, um, she came in. She called my husband. He was already outside waiting. Um, we, they put the little heater on me when she came to me help me she was gonna help me put like with my clothes on but I guess it was just too much for her so she literally just like put my robe on so I had this bra on and like nothing else under it in those socks and some house shoes um put it on put the heater there for a second like I literally got the heater and put it to my body I was literally like shaking convulsing like cold like I literally thought something was wrong that's how cold I was so anyway um yeah, they put me, you know, got uh, wheeled me outside, put me in the car with my husband, went home. So then my next day was my post-op day. I went to the doctor, or went to go see Dr. Sherpu, and he noticed that this implant was, like, raised higher than this one. Um, and he said it was because, like, of a muscle spasm, which is why I have this little band on to hold down, ouch, to hold down, um my my implant this implant or whatever um or to hold down that muscle to like help relax it or whatever because literally like it was a freaking disaster like it was really high and it just looked ugly like um and literally sorry my husband is playing the game but it looked like um like a torpedo that's literally um the only way i can um 
describe it is a torpedo like it was like big like you could just tell like they would have to drop and fluff per se so um yeah i did that i um went to went there he told me you know this one is angry get this so these are at the front desk which you have to purchase for ten dollars why don't you just give us one i don't know they didn't you had to purchase it um actually i just kind of snagged one that i saw in the operating room because i felt like i've already paid this much for this surgery then i have to pay for these labs then this this bra is 55 dollars so it's just kind of like i'm not paying for nothing else like that was just me so i saw one i kind of just snatched it call it stealing whatever you want i'm not paying for that so i put it on um and so far it's been holding you know holding it down everything's been okay as far as the pain um i wouldn't say that it's just like excruciating oh my god it's more of like un being uncomfortable um i've heard some people say it's like when your boobs are engorged with milk for anybody who's had a kid i wouldn't def i wouldn't necessarily say that but they do get excuse me they do get like hard or whatever um they do get hard at times but you know they they eventually soften up and it's not that bad it's just like kind of uncomfortable and it's like you kind of can tell that something is like new to your body um so yeah um basically as far as me aesthetics the prices are good the service was okay I wouldn't just say they were terrible, but they definitely weren't the best. But, I mean, to each his own, I guess it was okay. That's what I would say, just okay. Um, the price was affordable because in dollars, my breast augmentation is literally like $8,000. And in Austin, I paid, it's $3,300. $3, so, yeah, it really isn't that bad. Um, yeah, so, ba oh, another reason. So... I chose saline over um, saline over gel, just because I I don't know me I'm more I, even though breast breast implants are not even nowhere near natural, but I figure if I'm gonna have something foreign in my body in the event that it like messes up, at least the saline could be absorbed by my body. They said that if the gel leaks out, it'll cause your boob to get hard, disform, cause pain. You would have to go out and like scrape. It could be like years before you even know. And I just, yeah, that scared me. I was like, I would rather it pop or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And then go get it taken care of then. And then no harm done. Versus like my boob getting hard and they have to scrape out gel and like who knows. So, um, yeah. So basically, really, that's it. Uh, I'll put the links below. For the people that got, um, that did my medical clearance and the website for Jason Labs for anybody who's interested. Um, but yeah, that's been my journey so far. So I'm one week, one day post-op and I'll update you guys later. Have a good day.